Hi folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatoria. Um, so this is just a preliminary look at the new um, Red Dragon, uh, aka Hema Shop, um, feathers. Okay, so uh, many of you will be aware of the fact that the Hema Shop, uh, about um, a year ago now I think, uh, perhaps a bit less than that, released um, their first um, own brand feathers. Um, and these feathers are um, they're very reasonably priced. Um, and perhaps to some people more importantly, they're actually available off the shelf. So one of the drawbacks of lots of the feathers um, uh, out there at the moment by other makers um, and retailers is that you have, to, you have a long waiting list to get hold of them. And unfortunately, as longsword fencing gets more popular and these guys are still only one guy in a workshop hammering away, uh, the waiting lists are getting longer and longer. So uh, these fulfill a really good niche in the market. Uh, for a very affordable, completely functional um, uh, and available off the shelf, straight to your door in a matter of days, um, longsword feather. Um, so I guess pretty much all of you now who watch my channel will know what a longsword feather is. It is the essentially the fencing foil for longsword, used from uh, the 15th century, probably about the mid middle of the 15th century, um, right the way through, uh, in fact they continue being used in fencing competitions until the 17th or 18th century in Belgium, uh, but in mainstream use in the 15th and 16th centuries. And they were particularly the uh, longsword training weapon uh, associated with um, Germanic or German influenced um, fencing traditions. So we don't really see them in uh, England, France, Spain, Italy, uh, although there were similar functioning uh, fencing weapons in those countries. They didn't quite look like this with this flared ricasso. This flared ricasso is a particularly uh, sort of German design. So uh, we've got uh, two different types here. Uh, we've got one which has the sort of softer curved shape to the ricasso and we've got the very flared and this is actually called a schilt on, on, the, um, on this type of sword. Uh, we've got the squarer um, type one that looks more like the ones in Maya. Okay, so if you look at different fencing treatises from the 16th, uh, late 15th and 16th centuries, then you'll see different shaped feathers, um, all fulfilling similar purpose. Now, how are these different to the ones that they released um, a year ago? Quite simply, these are um, a bit stiffer. Um, they've um, really tightened down um, on the quality control, so these are, you know, they're dead straight, really nice smooth surface, the very high polish, nice finish on them, the cord wrap on the grips is very good, um, really good peening, completely solid, they ring like a bell, um, and, uh, and they, they handle pretty nicely. Um, I'll just put one down. <coughs> so we've got <coughs> a point of balance which is quite close to the hand. It's probably what that's about two inches, two inches from the from the cross guard. So it's quite close to the hand, but that is quite normal for for a uh, feather shirt. Um, the blade length is, I believe, about 37 inches. So it's quite equivalent to a lot of long swords, a sort of an average long sword size, should we say? Um, uh, long sword. For, for example, if you look at lots of the long swords that Albion sell, then lots of their blades are in that kind of length range, and it's the same length as the nylon um, nylon training weapons that they make as well. Um, the grips are pretty long. In fact, the uh, the hilt is longer than uh, the feather that I uh, that I have been using up on, up till now, which is a Peter Regnier one. Um, I personally tend towards uh, wanting to use a shorter hilt. Um, simply because I practice predominantly uh, Fiore de Liberi's um, longsword system from the early 15th century and um, as far as I'm concerned it, it, having too long of a hilt can be sometimes a bit of a hindrance with some of his techniques because you're using the sword in one hand quite a bit so you don't want too much hilt sticking out of the end. However, this style is very clearly popular and, uh, and is very widely seen in the German treatises um, particularly uh, things like Mayer, you know, the 16th century treatises, uh, where where hilts had got quite quite long by that point. Certainly on the on the practice swords at least. Um, so there we go. They uh, first first look of them. They look uh, really really good. They've got uh, good flex, but they're much stiffer than before. Uh, this is stiffer than my Regnier. 
it's way stiffer than the uh, Hanways, uh, so they are stiffer, but you'll notice they've got the uh, rolled tip, which I'm a big fan of and I have put on all my sabres. Uh, that means you don't have to add anything on the end, uh, nice and safe. Um, I think one of the virtues of having a stiffer, slightly sli uh, stiffer blade is you're less likely to get bends and breaks. It's probably, although it might have more impact upon uh, striking with a thrust, in actual fact, in the long run, these blades may well be uh, safer than the thinner, more flexible blades that are more liable to uh, bend and, and then break. Okay, so there we go. There's a first look. Um, I'll tell you some more views after I've had a good chance to bash them um, and be bashed by them. Okay, so there we go. That's uh, the Hema Shop um, Red Dragon um, Feathers. Two different designs. They're both basically the same weight, uh, same point of balance. It's just which you prefer the style of. Thanks a lot.